The tricky thing about doll sewing is that it's too small. How do you make Sharpie points? How do you tuck the tiny lining sleeve inside the main garment? How do you turn it over? You'll find the trick right here in this video. Let's start with the welt pockets. This teeny tiny welt pocket took mommy a whole morning. A lot of fussy until she figured out the better way to sew it. Instead of cutting it this small, she sewed it on a bigger piece of fabric for better control. We can always trim off the excess after successfully turning it over. There you go, two tiny pocket flaps. Now to mark where to sew the welt pockets, cut out the pocket that clearly marked on the pattern and trace it down on the side front. Then we'll sew the lining pocket like this. And attach the pocket flaps and the side fronts can be ready to sew to the center front. To sew these two panels that curve differently, we first have to clip along the inner curve. Then, we pin it together. The inner curve will open and bend to match the outer curve, and sewing will be much easier now. There's a couple things we need to do before we press the seam opened. First, we'll notch all the outer curves and clip the inner curves. Then, we'll press to melt the seam into the fabric. All of these steps are important and should be applied to all doll clothes sewing projects. The front is done. We apply exactly the same steps to the back side of the coat. If you find our videos helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, like, and share. Your interactions really encourage us to keep going. Now, when we have both sides ready, let's sew them together on the shoulders. Make sure the seams are aligned. This is how it looks when you have them aligned. To attach the sleeves, the double notch is the mark for the back, and the single notch is for the front. And yes, those two sides of the sleeves are slightly different. First, we gently gather the cap. Then, clip the armhole a bit to make it easier to match the seam line. We can 
either do a run stitch or pin along to hold them together. That's the main garment. Now the lining layer. Same thing except the center front has two pieces in two different fabrics. Once we sew them together, we got the same panels with the main garment. And the steps are exactly the same. Now let's make the collar. Here are some tips to make a sharp point collar. One. Use a shorter stitch closer to the point. 2. Trim the edges. 3. Turn it over with a thread. Try it and you'll see the difference. Cool, we got everything we need. Let's assemble them together. Right sides facing, sew the center front line to make the lapel. Apply the tips that I mentioned to make the sharp pointy lapel. Perfect. Now, collars are a bit tricky. One layer of the collar attached to the main garment, and the other stitched to the lining layer. And the notch that we mark on the collar should be aligned with the shoulder line. Again, the neckline is curved while the collar is straight. So what do we do? That's right. Clip it, of course. The rest of the collar, we found it better to hand sew it using blind stitches. You won't see one stitch.
Now here's the trick. We'll sew the hem line of the sleeves, lining the main garment. This way, when you turn the sleeve over, it will pull the lining along with it. Do you see the magic? The hem, if you want to sew it quick, you can just run it with the machine. We, however, don't want to see any stitches, so we take our time to hand sew invisible hem, like this. Let's put the snaps on and we're ready to put it on our dolls. Isn't she so pretty? Stay tuned, we have one more gown to share with you. jacket is a must in every girl's wallet drop, and our mini Leah finally got one for her own. Not only that, this one is a super puffy sleeve in hot pink that will make our little lady shine when mixing with a classy evening dress like this, or even a very simple summer dress like this. In this video, mom will show us how she made this super cute short jacket. 
first, we sewed the main layer and the lining one together. That way, we can iron it nicely before attaching the sleeves. Don't forget to clip the curve, or else it will get burnt to you when turning it over. See, now it has a neat finished neckline. Now the sleeves. In this miniature sewing, remember to always work on the hamming or sleeve cuffs first before it's too late. Then we gather the cap from notch to notch to make it puffy. After we got a puffy cap, we will need to sew the sleeve onto the bodies. The single notch of the sleeve will have to match with the single notch of the front bodies. The double notch of the sleeve will have to match with the back bodies like this. Pin them together and sew along. The final step is to sew the side seams of the sleeves and the bodies. Trim down the seam and then we'll have it done. Look how cute it is! Now the dress. Just a simple basic cup dress. This seems like many other dresses we have done. When we put a lot of attention to details, turning, trimming off all the excess, ironing seam by seam, it will become a very elegant dress. We've got a lot of requests asking to show more details how you sew the zipper neatly. Here you go! The easiest way is to use a separable zipper like what we have here. Sandwich each side of the zipper in between the two layers, pin along and sew. This time it's the invisible stitches on both sides. After that, we'll attach the slider on. Then measure the desired length of the zipper. Sew the bottom stop before cutting it off. That's it! How easy! And now the polka dot evening gown. In this video, Mom will spend more time to show us how to create patterns for her design based on the basic dress posted on our blog. In this design, we want to create a short bubble in the front dress and a long tail for the back dress. To make this bubble, two layers of the front dress are in different shapes. A longer and wider main garment and a smaller lining. Let's start with the lining layer. From this center front dress pattern, we shortened it up like half of the length. Fold it in half and cut. That is for the inner center front. Mark the side front to match the length of the center front. Lengthen the other side of the side front 3 cm. Draw a nice curve from mark 1 to mark 2 and cut. That's the inner side front. The next one is the back. Lengthen the center back 14 cm. Mark the side back to match the length of the side front. Mark 4. Draw a curve from mark 3 to mark 4 and cut. Now the main garment. The center front pattern of the main layer is the same with the basic dress, and the back is the same with the lining layer. We just need to lengthen the side front a bit to match with the length of the side back. Ta-da! Now things are much easier. 
Just sew each part together like what we did with all the other dresses. You can sew it by hand or with the sewing machine. But remember to pin along and don't forget to clip the curve and iron each seam. The way we sew the lining there is not much different with the main garment. When you have it both done, place them right side together and sew the neckline. Then braid down the seam and press to get a nice finished neckline. Now to create the bubble in front, from here to here, gather the main garment until it gets the same length with the lining layer. If you use the sewing machine, turn it onto the longest stitch. Then pull the under thread. Now pin the two layers together and sew along. For the out curve like this, don't forget to notch every inch before ironing to avoid barbecue when turning it over. See the bubble? Now let's turn it to the right side. Pin the center back seam together, allowing some space for the zipper. Lining layer to lining layer and main garment to main garment. Turn it over the last time. Looks more like it now, isn't it? The last step is attaching the zipper and hook. We always talk about invisible stitches to sew the zipper. This is how mom did it. She said pay attention to every single detail and you will get a big rewards from it. Thank you for watching.